Feedback Loop. I'm Joey. I'm Jeremy. And that was my second take. I just got to tell you guys, <laughs> I did like the, the weirdest shit when I tried to start this the first time. But anyways, this week we're listening to Prom Queen by Beach Bunny is what we listen to. It's an EP and I love it and I hope Jeremy likes it. I hate it. Oh shit. Zero out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> would not would not listen to again yeah beach bunny I, i'd already had some experience with um i quote unquote discovered them last year i think because they released an album uh, yeah honeymoon. honeymoon yep cool nailed it uh but yeah so I, I listened to that album quite a bit last year uh, i don't remember if i shouted them out at the end of the year because i didn't have a lot of time with them but yeah i enjoy their sound i enjoy them as a band i had not checked this out and I knew it was on our list, so I was I wasn't avoiding it, but I wasn't like seeking it out either yeah. necessarily. But uh, yeah, the album art for yeah. for Prom Queen, it's, it's kind of like, uh, dude, you're laughing. No, it's I was gonna say something uh, like how I always say like the intentionally ba- like oh, badly yeah, drawn class, art style, the classic Joey, <laughs> whatever description of Joey albums. And then I caught myself and I was like, it's just a fucking drawing of yeah. the ceiling, of a gym <laughs> ceiling at like a prom or something. Like it's the balloons are up in the rafters, there's a disco ball, there's lights or whatever, there's a big banner that says prom queen on it. And yeah, it just looks like a nice little drawing, got some pastel like purples and pink colors going on yeah, and yeah. it's blue and yellow. It's just a nice little color palette. Yeah, it's, it's visually appealing. I think. Yes, I, I like, agree. Like the kind of muted, muted uh, pastel colors for especially for album art. It, it reminds me a little bit of an album that we already talked about, and it also remind the the music also reminds me of the regrets. We did uh, feel your feelings full. Yeah, and the music's similar, and the uh, the pastel colors are also similar to the album art for that album. Yeah, because they were so sitting on a cake with like some. Nice, yeah. like, muted blues and pinks and stuff on the icing, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like what I remember. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the truth as we declare it, because that's our job, to, to speak the truth and nothing but the truth. And speaking of the regrets, I actually, because I put this on my, like, this EP on, I think I put it in my top five uh, for 2020, things I listened to in 2020. Mm-hmm. I actually, like... The first time I heard it was very, it was either like right before or very shortly after we did the, like recorded the regrets episode. And then I remember saying something to you and you're like, yeah, maybe I'll check it out or something. Then I remember you checking out the honeymoon and you were like, oh yeah, I checked them out. So I think you have said something about them before, but it was just. Well, now we're going to say even more about them because we're talking about Prom Queen, which is the name of the first track as well as the EP. Boom. What'd you think? What'd you think, man? I mean, I've, it's it's established that I, <laughs> I enjoy Beach Bunny, so I, I don't hate it. Yeah, okay. just get just to contradict myself what I said earlier. I don't hate it at all. I do enjoy this. I love the sound that they have. It's kind of this like West Coast surfy kind yeah. of rock thing. Like I mentioned, it's kind of similar to the Reds, but it's different. It, it's maybe a bit more chill on as far as like the energy level goes than the Regrets because the, the Regrets stuff was pretty like aggressive or like upbeat and fast and stuff um but this has more of like a that chill kind of vibe to it the backing vocals in the song are nice the mix is great just everything like i really enjoy the production of all of their music like it they they nail the sound that they that they have and there's no complaints from it for me at all yeah i i mean i feel the exact same way i fucking love this album i was mowing earlier i listened to this album two times in a row just back to back because Mad, man. What, I would have done that had we not been listening to it this week. <laughs> I would have just listened to it anyways. And, yeah, uh, I, I listened to it back to back yesterday, actually, when I went for a walk. So It's just... it's. I, I mean, it's short. I mean, yeah. it's an EP, right? It's 15 minutes. So normally we're doing, you know, 30 to 60 minute albums. So it, it kind of kind of it, it teases a little bit, I feel. Like, yeah. it's just like a teaser. Like, you get it and then you want more of it. So you, yeah. it, it's not bad to listen to it multiple times. Definitely. I feel like I have to when I listen to it. Uh, but yeah, like, so this, I don't know, this was, I guess, their first full EP. Like, so they had done singles before it. I mean, I know an EP is not like a full album or anything, but it's like, it was their first collection 
of songs, I think. You're wrong. I am? What do they yeah. have before this? They had one called Animalism. Animalism. Which was released in 2015, which has a song that was remade for this EP. What? But that... we'll we'll get to that. I'm surprised you didn't notice that when when doing that. We'll, we'll get there. So this is not their first EP. Oh my god. But. And it has, okay. That, that's, okay. I never knew. I'd heard all of the songs that are on it. But you thought they were all singles. I thought they were all separate, which looking at them now, I don't know why I would think that. But okay. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, I mean, we'll. misinformation. That's what we do best here at Feedback. Yeah. <laughs> it's what I do best at least. But, uh. But, but yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's fun. It's fresh. It's the not first EP yeah. by them, but it is an EP by them. Yeah, and for future reference, if I ever say anything, literally anything, feel free to fact check me. Because Please. Apparently yeah. I just bullshit all the time. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> it's it's not intentional, right? Yeah. It's just ignorance, I guess. Yeah, I, I have a lot of that. So, <laughs> so much ignorance. <laughs> but, uh, but, but yeah. Her, like, her voice is one thing that I really want to point out because I fucking love her voice. Interesting. Lily Trif- Trifilio, I believe that's how you say her last name. I have no clue. It looks right. It looks right, but yeah. Uh, I really like her voice. I like the way she sings. And I don't know, she sings in kind of like... I mean, she said herself that they make kind of like sad girl music. and mm-hmm. like. Uh, so she kind of sings with that same kind of way, but she does it with... I feel like there's more energy there than a lot of the other people. Like For sure. I don't know. Whenever I listen to like Joji or something as like a sad boy music, he sings in a very like mumbly whatever. Which <laughs> yeah. she she still keeps the kind of dejected, like downward singing type thing, but she she projects a lot and she kinda has a lot of energy in it, I guess. For sure. So Yeah, she like when when listening to especially this EP, like you, you kind of picture her singing it almost in, in tears in, in some aspects. Not, yeah. Not that she's like sobbing or weeping or like like from Corbin's more. It's not like anything like that where it's just like an extreme belting kind of thing. But you can definitely get that kind of tinge of like, oh, she she seems like she was sad when singing this kind of a thing. Yeah. But not like not like openly weeping or crying or anything. But yeah. Like, like she's close. really feeling it. Yeah. whenever she sings it which, which is, is awesome important yeah i, I think it, it's what makes a lot of music especially like sad boy sad sad girl music work is just because it it, it it makes it real it gives it like soul to it and and it makes it easier to relate and to feel the music i think if you can tell that the artist was clearly feeling it or was able to put themselves in that place yeah while singing it or recording it which, like, going to the lyrical content of Prom Queen, I mean, it's something that I would imagine she probably, like, being a girl, she probably has a lot of experience with. Because right. uh, this song is, I mean, it's, like, I don't know, it's hard to talk about this as a guy and, like, not sound like I'm coming off. I don't know. I don't know. I feel bad saying it. Or I feel like I don't know enough about it to say it. Because, I mean, there's expectations on guys in, like, different ways. But, like, sure. it's her, this song is about, like, fitting into the typical beauty standards, like, the mold. Mm-hmm. And feeling, like, all that pressure to fit in and to look a certain way. And being told that, like, oh, boys aren't going to like you if you don't look this certain way. Or if you don't. Right. Which, not true. I mean, not that me saying that changes anything <laughs> right but but yeah there's just, definitely the, like an overarching like societal norm and of you know how a woman should look to be considered pretty or attractive and you know what i said not true i feel like that's unfair because it's totally true but yeah. <laughs> like i want it to not be true but sure. it is so sure. but and for some people it's not so that we'll leave it at that some people it's not doesn't matter to them some people it does that doesn't mean anything but uh Indeed. And like, I, I think specifically in the context of this EP being called Prom Queen and the song being called Prom Queen, it it, it seems to point more specifically than just like general 
standards and beauty standards and stuff, but especially in younger women that are like in high school, yeah, where bullying to some degree is kind of accepted, especially well, I, I don't want to say accepted, but it's tolerated, I suppose. Yeah, and, nothing's really done about it, like right, and and. I don't know. I feel like, again, as you said, we're not teenage girls. We've never been teenage girls. So we we don't speak from experience. We speak from empathy, I guess, when, when talking about this kind of thing. Yeah. But, like, it, it's fucked up that kids are assholes. Yeah. And, and they'll do anything to hurt each other and to make themselves feel secure and feel good. And a lot of times that results in, in girls, you know, picking on the looks of other girls and stuff. Yeah, and then that just breeds... I mean, it... I don't know. I'd like to think it calms down once you're an adult, but... Sure. Like, it, I, th I feel like it does for a large portion of people, but yeah. maybe not everyone. Yeah. I mean, there's still, like, the the adult women who judge other women by their looks and stuff. I feel sure. like... But yeah, it gets less. But... P people just stop giving a fuck about, yeah. about a lot of things as they get older. Yeah, I, I, I do. Like, I, I don't give two shits about really anything <laughs> anymore. But if, if I get more pretty, do you think you'll like me? Uh, I mean, I don't think you could get more pretty, Jeremy. Oh, thanks, Joey. But I mean, this, this is the kind of support we need. This is the support that we give all of our audience as well. You're you're beautiful the way you are. You don't need to have plastic surgery to change. I mean, we, I feel like we we've said this a couple times. Because similar content was on the Regrets album, similar content was on the uh, Melanie Martinez album, uh, where it, it, it just, you don't you don't gotta you don't gotta impress anybody. Be yourself, yeah, and that will impress people naturally. And I feel like this is just once again just a super fucking hot take from some random average, literally average dude who really has nothing, no stake in the game here, but. uh I don't know, like, it. I feel like it gets into, like, not necessarily this song in particular, but, like, we'll just go ahead and, the next song is called Painkiller, <laughs> and it, I was just gonna say something about, like, plastic surgery, and it was something I was actually thinking about the other day, and it's, like, I, I just feel like it gets really, like, fucked up, because there's so many people that are, like, against it, and then, yeah. like, get upset about it. And all this stuff, and it's, like, demonized or whatever, because it's supposed to be like, ah, it's so fake and whatever. But then, and I don't know, I I used to be like that. I'd be like, ah, be natural, learn, like, love yourself, whatever, like, all that stuff. And that's good sentiments to have. It's sure. good, you, like, it's good to love who you are and to be able to, like, whenever you look in the mirror, to be like, that's me, and I love that or i i'm at least okay with yeah. that <laughs> like that is acceptable to me and it's not going to depress me to look in the mirror because mm -hmm. what i see is fine right and i feel like demonizing like plastic surgery kind of like doesn't need to happen because what if you just do what if there's like to to be able to have that and i know this treads a very thin dangerous line but to have that you're like man, if I could just look in the mirror and, like, I looked just slightly different or something, like, I, I, there's part of me that, like, wants to be like, no, love yourself, na right. like, naturally. But then there's also part of me that's like, we have the technology, and if that is, like, literally all that you need, and that's just would make you feel, that would, that would fix it. Yeah, and then I you can look, look in the I mirror and be like, okay. But then that also, I feel like that's such a, a hard line to draw. Right. I, th I think the intention is super important in whether or not, at least me personally, it, I view it as okay. If you're seeking out plastic surgery to make somebody else happy with you, yes, to, to impress somebody else, then I feel like that's not a, that's not a healthy thing, right? If you're doing yeah. it to make yourself happy or to feel comfortable with yourself, then absolutely you have every right to do so. And I, I cannot, I cannot tell you no, don't yeah. do that. It's bad. But I feel like a lot of the the demonization comes because people assume that if someone's getting plastic surgery, it's because they feel they aren't pretty enough to meet somebody else's standards. Which I think is what the the song's talking about, what uh, prom queen's talking about, and what 
a lot of other music. At least that's the way I interpret it. Is yeah. not necessarily demonizing plastic surgery as a whole, but doing so in order to fit into certain standards, which yeah. sucks ass. And you, sh- I'm not gonna say you should never do, but it it's. It's know your reasons healthy. before like yeah. at least going into it no and that's the other thing it's like okay you can say you're doing it for somebody else or yourself but then it's like did does your sense of self has it been so warped by right. outside pressure which is like and i'm not he like i don't like i'm sorry i went off on this tangent it was no, just it's fine. We, we got a short ep so we have all of the wiggle room in the world but i was It was just something I was thinking about just from the general themes of this and just like, I don't know, just I think about things sometimes, you know, I just just have thoughts. Occasionally have (laughs) thoughts. Yeah, you're a thoughtful guy. But uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. It's it's just kind of something weird that it's like, I don't know how much of it. It's kind of like debating the whole like nature versus nurture thing, I feel like. But it's like debating how much of your sense of self is determined by outside pressure and sure. whenever you make a decision that's like i'm i'm doing this for myself like how much of it are you actually doing for yourself right and i i think to put this to put a more fine point on it i i feel like maybe that's not the right idiom to use but i, I think it's very similar to and I guess I think there's a change happening in society because of trans rights, right? Yeah, a lot yeah, of exactly. Are feeling that like they can't be themselves with whatever genitalia they were born with, or or whatever society's telling them that they are. And obviously, I'm not an expert in that field. I I again, like Joey said, we're we're both very like average dudes. So I I don't have a lot of experience with that. I don't have any friends. That, that have gone through that shit, but as as long as you're doing so to feel accepted, to feel comfortable with yourself, I'm okay with it. If you're doing it just to fit in, then, which I'm not saying that happens, that probably doesn't happen, Yeah. but uh, I guess I can't say it I doesn't mean, happen, yeah. but I, I just, yeah, again, attention, attention is incredibly important, and to some degree, obviously, people want to fit in with other people. So if you're trying to make friends in high school or something, you might hide, conceal, you know, part of your personality, or you might accent other parts, or you'll do things that you normally wouldn't consider you to fit in. And some of that's okay, because you, you have to make friends. But I, I think there there's an intention and an extent that that is very important when yeah. looking at at uh, plastic surgery and, and other th- other ways of changing yourself, I guess. Yeah, that's yeah, and bringing up like not to keep harping on shit that I don't know anything about, but like uh, <laughs> that's what bring, we do. bringing up like trans rights. That's kind of what I was thinking about because it's like yeah, if you're gonna look in the mirror and be like, no, this is not okay. What I'm seeing right now is not okay. That's right. one because it, before it was like. Just being like, I don't know, a typical dude, it's like, usually, and this is going to sound really, like, shitty, but, like, back in the day, it was like, oh, like, if you're going to go get, like, a boob job or something, so more guys will like you or whatever. It's like, you don't have, like, coming, being very condescending, saying, you don't have to do that, guys will like you, but it's like. It's, but it's, but it's but also it's, the same guys that are expecting women to be all like ex- Barbie dolls, you know? Exactly. It's like, no, you don't have to. It's like, oh, you gotta not leave me with any. But then it's like, people look at that as shallow. And I was like thinking about that and thinking about how, like, I don't know, just general thoughts could have changed where it's like, I used to be in the like super, like, yeah, natural. But then now I'm like, I don't know if a girl just like, just wanted bigger boobs i don't know like do it <laughs> fucking go yeah, for your, it your body as it's, long as you feel comfortable yeah. with it and you understand why you're doing it and, yeah and the risks associated and whatnot it all goes down to the the thought of like i don't know you you want to look in the mirror and be happy with what you see or at least right. be content with what you see and if you need surgery to do that then don't let people be like getting in your way of that i guess 
Yeah. Is, is the long and short of what I was <laughs> trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Know. But after you do get surgery, if you, you do get surgery, uh, you might feel some achiness. You might feel some pain. Maybe you should take some painkillers. Yeah. And you know what? You should also listen to track number two, painkillers, while you're taking your painkillers. Which is, is not a Judas Priest cover. Mm-mm. <laughs> no it is not <laughs> i don't think so. I, that's the only when i hear painkiller i just think of judas priest yeah i don't think not not to downplay beach bunny's uh For sure. musical prowess but i don't think they could <laughs> i don't think they're the band to be pulling off a judas priest cover. <laughs> yeah track number two this one uh painkiller i i again noted that i think they really nailed the guitar tone and the riff in the song is fantastic. The surfy atmosphere of it is just top notch. Fun fact that I learned, they're from Chicago, which is fascinating to me because it the sound to me is such a West Coast kind of surf rock vibe. Yeah. And it 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 was kind of surprising to me to find out that they're not from the West Coast at all. Yeah, I like they definitely have it nailed down for sure. Like especially like you said with the guitar tone on this song it it plays in my head the melody of this song plays in my head constantly and it's got like that nice bright and twi- like kind of twangy yeah like rock guitar sound i guess but it's i mean they have a song called california girl where she's on a uh, honeymoon where she's talking about it's true the guy's got a california girl not that you know miss, that miss california i think just Miss California, is it? Is that what it is? I think it's, I think it's Miss California. Yeah, they, they'd probably get sued if it was California Girls too close to that Katy Perry song. <laughs> <laughs> Katy Perry is a monster suing everyone that, that has songs called California Girls. Uh, uh, but yeah, there's also in the song, there's like a really chill, vibey breakdown section. Yeah. That, that really like lets the, the funky ass bass line kind of kick in and the guitar gets a little like solo lick time kind of thing. And then the drums bring it all back in. And the song at that point, and then like after I got the thought in my mind, it stuck with me. It reminds me a lot of uh, "Tongue Tied" by Group Love, just like okay. the melody of it and the, the sound of this track a lot. Yeah. Just kind of like reminds me of that song, which I've never really listened to, to Group Love. I've only heard "Tongue Tied" because it's on Rock Band, to be <laughs> honest. But uh, that's that's what the kind of feel reminds me of. And then after that the the bass and the drums drop out and it leaves just the vocals with some like very like simply strummed chords and yeah. stuff and it feels so empty i fucking love it it's Hell a yeah. fantastic sound yeah it is whatever because at that point in the song she's just kind of like listing off like pain medication like yeah i just like i need tramadol i need ketamine i need just pa- paracetamol pa- paracetamol i was trying to <laughs> like i was trying to say it because I know the word, and I'm re- but I'm reading it also, and I, yeah. I'm not good at reading and saying things. <laughs> but yeah, it's she's just and it whenever it just backs out, her voice is kind of like wavery, like so you can yeah. really tell she's like she means what she's saying or she feels the way, and that's like that's just what I like about her singing. It's very genuine. It is fantastic. Speaking of the things she's singing, lyrics. That's what she's singing. The, the, yeah. song, <laughs> the song lyrically is kind of a breakup song. Uh, it seems, maybe I was I was reaching, I don't think I was. It seems kind of connected to the prior track because she mentions reconstructive surgery again. Uh, yeah. In, in one of the verses or whatever. Um, but yeah, it, it seems like her boyfriend left her for another girl and he's kind of trying to comfort her in some way, but he's really just covering his ass so he doesn't feel guilty about it. And she just ends up feeling like she's not pretty enough and she's not meeting his standards or whatever. And obviously that shit fucking sucks. Yeah. I really like that line that uh, reconstructive surgery can't fix my anxiety. Like right there, I feel like it, it sums up a That's lot. It sums one. up the first two tracks. <laughs> yeah. Like it's just like, okay, like I have all these things telling me like you need to be pretty or you need to be like, I have a, a way, but it won't fix the thoughts that I have, which is really the issue that I'm having. Yeah. Like it's uh, my issue personally is not it's an how internal I internal struggle. Yeah. It's an internal struggle. It's not going to fix an internal struggle. Right. And I just like it. It's, and it's, I, th- I think that's fun. kind of what we were getting at with the intention of getting plastic surgery, right? If you're doing it because you, you personally want it, then that's, that's one thing. But doing it 
to try to conceal or to try to cover up or to fit in, it's not going to fix you inside, mm -hmm. right? You're still going to feel like shit. You're still going to feel like you're not meeting standards and you're never going to be satisfied until you like figure out how to get that shit under control, which is not an easy thing to do. Not at all. <laughs> but it, it is possible, I believe, or it's at least manageable. So I think gotta, it's gotta work at it. I don't know. Like, I, I, I'd like to think it's possible, but fucking who knows, man? <laughs> like, really? I, I will say, uh, speaking of great lyrics, I, I really enjoy, I, I don't want to say great, that, that puts it on a pedestal a yeah. bit too high, but I really like the first verse and the, the first pre-chorus as, as Genius has it broken down, uh, just because I like clever, like, wordplay and stuff. She yeah. says, uh, you're careful with your words, but I'm pulling teeth. You said this wouldn't hurt. Give me cavities. And all of your apologies are only empty calories. So there's this kind of like theme, I guess, of those lyrics being like orally related, right? Yeah. Pulling teeth, getting cavities and, and all that shit. Like, I don't know. It, it's nice to have a theming of lyrics that's all metaphorical, I suppose. Yeah. I like it too. I, I just like it. I like it. I mean, I like the way that it starts off with her just screaming, you've been such a jerk since you left last week. I just like yeah. Fuck that I guy. Like it. It's fuck, fuck you, dude. You, you're <laughs> being a jerk. You're being a fucking jerk, man. <laughs> Get over yourself and say goodbye. If her name is Summer, you say goodbye, Summer. Yeah, and then if you were sending that in a text and you were really genuine about it, about that goodbye, you probably put like a little sad face next to it. Sad face emoji. Sad yeah. face emoticon, man. Sad face emoticon. <laughs> and then that, uh, that text might inspire someone to, to write a song called goodbye summer with a sad face and put it as track three on prom queen <laughs> <laughs> killing it Ooh. this is a lovely ass interlude yes I, it is i really really enjoy the sound of of this track it's like a minute and a half long yeah uh, which i think it's short it's sweet it's to the point like this entire ep really and it just like it has some ambient wave sounds coming in and some like goals and there's this like swelling organ sound kind of mm -hmm. thing in the background and there's some like faint vocal ooze and, and stuff it just it transports me to like an empty east coast beach at sunset potentially towards like the end of summer so it's a little bit chilly i mean the song is called goodbye summer yeah so yeah, i kind of get this this feeling of being a, a little bit cold but not too bad and you're just kind of like sitting there watching the waves crash in and it's just it's a nice little moment. Yeah, and I feel like it's just... I don't know, because the next song that comes up, I fucking love. So, like, this is kind of like an intro to that, because you can hear a little bit of it in the... Like, it's mixed in, like, some of the lyrics that you hear in the back are, like, lyrics along to that. And it's to the point where I, like, I have to listen to this as an intro to that, even if I just want to listen yeah. to that song. Just because it's just... It sets uh, the mood. Yeah, it's a nice little, like, vibe that just gets you going. Yeah, and you could just listen to it for like six weeks. I really could, and then <laughs> all I'd be playing was track four from Prom Queen titled Six Weeks. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so so Goodbye Summer, I'm just going to jump quickly to the lyrics. Here yeah, sorry. Just a second. We'll, we'll talk about everything else. But Goodbye Summer, it like, uh, like you mentioned, it, it has some of those lyric lines, but it also has some ooze that the ooze that I mentioned are also in six weeks. So really goodbye summer is pretty much just like a prologue, kind of like you mentioned, it's an introduction to six weeks. And a lot of those sounds carry over and the chill vibe carries over the reverby clean guitars sound fantastic. Uh, and it, it's, I don't know, it's such a chill vibe for the song being six weeks, not goodbye summer. I mean, that's also a good vibe, but <laughs> Yeah, uh, the even like there's this drum rise, and when when the song like supposed to come in and like really pack a punch, and it 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 rises and it starts the song off in in a way that was expected, but it doesn't have the aggressive punch that I, that I was kind of expecting it to have, which is not a bad thing at all. I think it's it's fantastic what they did with it. It just like it starts to rise, and then it it gets to where it is, and it just kind of like it hits it and it finds its stride without it becoming an aggressive like upbeat rock song. It's just it's keeping the kind of the chill vibe from Goodbye Summer, and a lot of the sounds are very similar. The bridge in the song, I, I love it. Yeah. it. When she's just saying, can we go back? It like slows the song down, and it spaces out, and then jumps right back into the chorus and, and fucking killing it. Man, I love literally everything you just said. It's... <laughs> well, you also really love the song. I do! Mentioned. Oh my god, I fucking love this song. I love singing it. <laughs> 
I love listening to it. Yeah. I love just everything about it. It is like, I don't know, because it just captures, like, it's, I know I say it to death, but like, it just captures a feeling of wanting to go back to a specific point in time or recapture a feeling or something like along those lines that I just feel so much in my life. And it's... Because you're a nostalgia man. Exactly. And it's like, it's something I'm trying to curb because it's not healthy. Eh, it, I wouldn't I, say it's unhealthy. It's unhealthy for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fucking unhealthy. <laughs> But the things that you're you're that that one guy that's like he was a high school football player and he just can't uh, recapture the the glory that he's wanting. Essentially, but I never had any glory, and I don't <laughs> understand. And I'm not going back to any like I'm just it's just random points in my past that it's like oh my god, like I'll see something. It's like the wind will hit my back at the right moment, and I'll be like oh my god, <laughs> that one time I was listening to this band at. Yeah. fucking waterfront wednesday this one time and it just felt it took me back and whatever i, I really think we should have a, a discussion for another episode obviously of like musical associations that stick out to us because i i have a lot of those as well yeah like i think it's kind of the inverse of what you you just described where if i listen to a song or an album it kind of makes me think of what i was doing the first time i heard this or, or when i was listening to it a lot yeah thing but I, I think that that could be an entire other episode in itself yeah but uh you're right like the bridge the can we go back part where it's kind of like just drops out a little bit and it's just her saying yeah. it like it's chef's kiss right there sous it's, chef's it's just kiss, sous chef's kiss. <laughs> Reference to something that only like five people know about, <laughs> <laughs> and only us two will will ever hear and understand. Well, I don't know, maybe one person that's involved. Yeah, uh, but it's. I just... wasn't gonna call attention to it, Joey. No, I did. Sorry. I totally did. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I had to because I'm that now, cool. Now you guy. all feel like you're left out of an inside <laughs> joke. But uh, yeah, you know, it's just a really good song. It's probably my favorite song on the album. And I said probably. I don't know why the fuck I said probably. I think it is my favorite song <laughs> in the album. But it's yeah. just really It good. also has a, re a really cool acoustic solo, which yeah. I thought was an interesting choice because a lot of the album is very much not acoustic and, and kind of like... It, it's, it stands out because it's an acoustic solo compared to the other songs that have had like kind of a clean electric kind of solo section to them, which yeah. is cool. And also, apparently, I mean, I've already been wrong once this episode, so fucking who, who knows if this is right. <laughs> But I feel like I remember watching an acoustic set with them where she, uh, she talked about when she wrote this song. And this was like one of the very first songs that she wrote that kind of turned into Beach Bunny. And uh, like I get, she wrote it and it was about like, I think she came home for, for like winter break and it was six weeks long. And that's that was the six weeks she's talking about in this song. So and then she wrote it and just, I guess, showed it to somebody and they're like, hey, this is pretty fucking good. You should probably do something with this. And she did. <laughs> she made a man. <laughs> now we got Beach Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> now we got Beach Bunny, which is uh, pretty fucking cool. Yeah. The lyrics of the song, uh, I feel like the in, in Painkiller, she mentioned codependency. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's kind of in part, I guess, talking about codependency on prescription drugs because the song is called Painkiller. So it's kind of a double entendre, I suppose. But she's also talking about her boyfriend when she said something about it. And I didn't think anything of it at the time. But with this track, it kind of comes more prominent. Yeah. That it seems like she was super, like, codependent or, or clingy, I suppose. Where it seems like she was dwelling on the good times that they had when they were together. And trying to, like, rationalize or maybe even bargain with her ex. Trying to get him to come back, even though it probably wasn't as great as, as she's remembering. Yeah. Just, the, like, in, in the second verse, she says, I have a heart attack every time you get up, get up, get up, get up. Because you said you'd be back soon. But the other one said that too. So like clearly there's some abandonment issues going on there. Yeah. Which tend to go hand in hand with codependency and, and, and clinginess and stuff like that. So I thought that was kind of a, an interesting darker through line, I suppose, than what I was expecting, I guess. I mean, I think it, yeah, I think it just talks to just the general, I don't know. I feel like they capture adolescence. And kind of like the growing, they're very like a coming of age band. Sure. Like she writes songs 
in such a way that it's like she perfectly encapsulates that feeling. Because I mean, like, I don't know, that seems like a a high school relationship type thing where it's like everything, it feels like everything she's talking about is like something that you remember like back to whenever you were like 18 or something. Right. And well, So that's an interesting point. I looked up how old she was because I was curious because I kind of got the same vibe that she was just like, she was killing it with capturing a specific time. Uh, she was born, I think, in 96. Oh, fuck. And okay. six weeks came out in 2015, so she was like 19, 20 years old well, at the time that it, that it is. So it all like makes perfect sense that she was able to write from such a real spot and, and make it sound real. Obviously, this came out, or, or I guess this recording of six weeks came out years later, yeah. but she still like manages to capture the voice of of sa- sorrow and, and sadness and she can still clearly relate or remember a time and encapsulate that time when she wrote the song when she was like 20 ish and, and going through a breakup or whatever yeah and i don't know like props to her because whenever I, I was feeling shit con- not necessarily like this because i don't know like typically guys and girls have like different experiences in this sure. realm Not all the time, but I mean, like, I didn't have this experience, but I had, like, similar feelings, and, uh, she, there's absolutely no way I could have written a song this, that captured it this fucking well whenever (laughs) I was 19. Yeah. I wasn't doing shit when I was 19. (laughs) I was thinking about that exact thing, like, when I was looking up her her age and stuff like that, because I'm just super fascinated by it, because I feel like such a shithead that, like... I, I dabble a little in songwriting, and I say that to make myself feel less embarrassed by the fact that I, I just, I'm not great at it, and I haven't done it a lot, and I don't stick to it. But these fucking people, like fucking Lily, who have just been writing music and doing it, and just fucking killing it yeah since they were, like, teenagers, is it's, it's a little upsetting, but it's also fucking awesome, and I'm yeah. super jealous, and I'm glad that it happens. Uh, I just feel bad about myself for it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> But maybe you can use that that uh, that jealousness and rage, internalized <laughs> rage, and turn it into something. Because you know that's just part of adulting, man. You, once it you is. become an adult, just accepting that you're old and yeah, there are younger people that are going to do cooler things than you, or just learning how to at least bottle all that up and turn it into something semi-productive, or turn it into some sort of like podcast di- where we podcast. talk about track number five <laughs> called adulting. adulting. <laughs> Yeah, that's us. We're at that stage now. We're, we are internalized rage being spewed at Lily Trefilio for being good at what she does. She's fantastic at what she does. <laughs> ah, but this song, this song. So originally, the first few times I listened to this album way back a year ago or whatever, whenever I first started listening to it, mm-hmm. it I liked it. But this was like I was kind of like meh. It's it's. Like, after the rest of the songs, it's, like, it's pretty good. But the more I've listened to it, especially this week, the more I like it. Yeah. it It's definitely, like, I don't know, it feels initially out of place because it's it's more upbeat than the prior track. And, like, Goodbye Summer and Six Week have such a, like, chill vibe to them. And it really, like, it hits its stride. And then this one comes in and it's kind of a change. And so it, it's a little jarring, I suppose, but it still got the Beach Bunny vibe, I think. And I really enjoy some of the like musical. There's like a switch up for the chorus that comes in with like the the toms just pounding behind everything. That just like it gives it a good drive feeling. And then there's another little solo section that just kind of like takes its time, lets everything kind of sink in before yeah. we get back to the song. And yeah, I, I don't dislike the song, but I think you, you were right in thinking that it like i don't know it 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 stands out as not standing out on the album i guess yeah and i think part of it for me is just like man fucking prom queen painkiller and i mean goodbye summer and six weeks combined are just fucking bangers yeah and like it's hard to live up to that but i do like i've come to appreciate this song like this song the the chorus like, I don't catchy. know, there's part... Yeah, like, it's super catchy. And I do like how it's faster. It's just, I don't know, coming after all, like... Coming right off the heels of Six Weeks with how, like, I don't know, more energetic this song is. Yeah. yeah, it just feels kind of weird. But if you just listen to it and take it as it is, it's just 
a, a pretty solid, I guess, uh, a bedroom poppy punk type song. Yeah, and lyrically, it, it pretty much sums up exactly what we were hinting at last track. Yep. <laughs> with the a lot of her songs kind of talk about growing up, right, and and being or, or going through the hardships of adolescence and stuff, which is, I mean, the song is called Adulting, and it's talking about her having a fear of growing up and not really knowing what she's doing with her life, which I think everyone can relate to yeah. at some point where you're at this kind of like weird midpoint between being in school and having like a career or having your shit together. And you're kind of like hyper aware of how much time is passing and you're horrible at like working on yourself because nobody teaches those skills in school. So you're, you're just kind of existing and not really sure what to do. And that's what yeah. the song's about. And God damn, is that relatable? <laughs> yep. And just fucking hoping it works out. It's, it's literally just like for the first 18 years of your life, I mean, 22, I guess, like, for college, but, like, they're just like, this is gonna be the big fucking time, like, you're just yeah. getting ready for this, and then you're just thrust into it, and you're like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, like, yeah, just, I've learned just, no life skills, but I can multiply. <laughs> so you're just bad. randomly just throwing shit around, like, I hope this works, oh man, maybe this will work, I'll apply over here, okay, guess I'm gonna work fucking in this random bullshit industry that I don't care about for the next fucking 10 years, because... <laughs> It, it's I just got a job here, so I guess this is my career, even though it doesn't have anything to do with what I was hoping to do or trying really, to do. I would appreciate you not outing me on the internet in front of all of our three listeners. It's okay, because it's me too, also. <laughs> We're in this together. <sighs> but yeah, like, it's totally just in cap, like, the lyrics especially just, I mean, capture. She's really good at that, like, she is very good at putting these like extremely anxiety inducing emotions down into song in ways that I can just like listen to it and be like, ah, yes, anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, the, the good old friend of mine. <laughs> oh, it's great. I do like that. Uh, I do like the lyric. Life was easier when on the verge of 17. Can't buy alcohol. I'm taking shots of Listerine. <laughs> like, it just reminds me of like, what a shithead I was whenever I was like We're that age. Shots of Listerine Joey. It's just like, it would be the like constant search for like, how can we somehow legally as minors obtain <laughs> right. a way to alter our state of mind? <laughs> okay, somebody says you can smoke nutmeg. I guess we're going to fucking try that. <laughs> like, right. Yep. Yep. You're going to soak, soak a tampon and alcohol and shove it up your ass or something, yeah. you know? Kids are fucking stupid. Okay. And that's uh, why they're not allowed to drink. Um, yeah they do it anyway because yeah. again kids are stupid but fuck, you know. fuck you all you kids listening you're yeah kind of dumb as hell but my, you'll get better you'll understand in, in 10 years you're gonna be the old man having a podcast yelling at kids on the internet <laughs> but see the secret is you never figure it out like yeah. i feel like there's always shit to be figured out and for sure i feel like mentally nobody like i don't know I, maybe this is just me projecting but, like, it's, I don't feel like somebody who's a few years away from 30. Like, yeah, <laughs> I still feel like the same exact person that I've always been. But now right. I'm just, like, I don't know, like, people are like, hey. You have a house. You have yeah. a kid. It's you like, have hey, a job. You took out a loan to pay for a house. You got to pay us back now. Oh, so right. you, ha you have to have a job where you go to work and people are like counting on you. Like you can <laughs> you handle things that right. if you don't you do have responsibilities. Them, yeah. If you don't do the things that you're supposed to be doing, like a lot of people are going to be <laughs> fucked. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that's society. You got to contribute. You got to be a gear, you know, in the, in the clock of death. Yeah. Where this week, that's this week's uh, Metalocalypse <laughs> weekly reminder. <laughs> watch Metalocalypse. <laughs> oh god, we, sh we should get a we should contact Adult Swim and get like a sponsorship deal where we just plug Metalocalypse and then they'll they'll love it because it'll make people want another season of Metalocalypse and they'll just continue shitting on Metalocalypse fans like yeah. they have been for the past what six years. Or they'll continue try like. They're ongoing, just fucking like I don't know, extortion feud, whatever. With <laughs> fucking Brendan Small, where they're like, "Hey, fuck you, <laughs> specifically you, go fuck yourself." Uh, fuck Adult Swim. I just want another watch, season to watch Metalocalypse. 
Fucking just, write them a strongly worded letter. Hey, if you work at Adult Swim or know someone who works at Adult Swim and is listening to this podcast, one, hi, I love you. Two, go fuck yourself and tell them to fucking get their shit together and release, release yeah. another season of Metal Envelopes. Make the last season, please. That's just, literally all I want. Like, you were so close. We were so close to finding out so many things <laughs> and we just didn't. Uh, next week... Yeah, what are we listening to? Of my choice, I chose Japanese Breakfast is the artist. The album is Soft Sounds from Another Planet. Ooh, that sounds nice. Sounds soft, doesn't it? Yeah. So we're going to be checking that out this week. Uh, I actually don't have a ton of experience, I suppose, with the album. I have listened to it all, but it's been been a hot minute since I've listened to it, and I really enjoy it. And I was listening to it a bit today, and I'm like, yeah, this is perfect. I love it. So we're going to be listening to that this week. Uh, let us know what you guys thought of Beach Bunny's pool. Uh, I almost said pool party because it's another <laughs> EP. Yeah, that they've done. Oof, um, I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, prom queen was what we just talked about. Let us know how you feel about that. Let us know what you think about Beach Bunny in general. Let's start to think about Metalocalypse when you when you watch it because this is the Metalocalypse show now. Um, also, <laughs> listen to Japanese Breakfast Soft Sounds from Another Planet this week, and be part of the discussion next week. And by part of the discussion, I mean you get to listen, and then you can tell us what you think. Yeah, because that's that's how the internet works. You can't like we can't just bring everybody in and just have like a giant forum or like a panel. Maybe maybe we could do like a live show <laughs> at some point, but not now, not this week. Just nope. listen to the fucking album and tweet <laughs> us or comment to to let us know what you think of it, and we'll reply. We have nothing yeah. better, better to do. Definitely not. We're fucking we're fucking hanging out, you know. Just doing stuff. Just doing, doing. We're we're adulting. Yeah, which is strangely similar to not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Anyways, shit. stay in our feedback loop. Bye. <laughs>